Hello and welcome to our post-match show after the defeat against Preston North End. Today we're joined with former Huddersfield Town midfielder Ian Dunn and former Huddersfield Town left-back Tariq Holmes-Dennis. How are you both? You okay? Very good, thank good, you. Good, thank you, Adam. Excellent. It's really, well, really good to hear. Um, Ian, I'll start with you. Obviously, it wasn't the result we wanted. We got off to a really good start. Uh, but there was a couple of mad minutes, wasn't there, in the in the second half? What was your take on the match? I mean, I thought it was very even from from for, for well, certainly the first half. I thought Town were that a little bit brighter, had a bit a bit more about them. Um, at one stage, I think was it Potts? It could have been a sending off, which yeah, in with hindsight, you know, would have probably helped Town. Uh, but I, to be brutal, honest, I thought second half, I thought Preston. They, pre they did press hard, you know, they, they really did camp in Town's half for a lot of it and until maybe the last 15 when Town stepped up again, even though they went down to 10 men, which was a real a real, um, a real real blow. It was two even teams for me. Preston just had the edge, you know, it was one of them games it could literally have gone either way, a couple of decisions here and there. Um, I know you can never blame, you know, you could say the referee, really, that the Potts challenge was, it was a red, in my book, it was a red all day long. Does that change the score? We'll never know. But yeah. I thought it was two very even teams, but Preston probably, if we're to be brutal on this, probably shaded it. What was your take on the game, Tariq? Yeah, I think similar. I think it was very even. Um, that energy that Huddersfield had in the last 15 of the game, maybe if they had that for the whole for the whole game, it would have not been as even. But they they played well. There was not much between the teams. You couldn't see too much between the teams. It was a good match to watch. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. to, to Tariq, in that second half, like I, I said earlier, there was those mad couple of minutes, wasn't there, with, with the goals. From, from a defensive point of view, how could they have been avoided? Um, I feel like it's just, you know, with keeping the... How do I word it? Sorry. <laughs> the, the, team, the structure at the <laughs> you know now the structure at the back like every I think everyone could be compact from the midfield to the defence sometimes maybe a little bit there might have been a little bit of a disjointness but as a whole as a whole together everyone was everyone was like it was solid but it was just those two moments of madness you know the communication maybe for the for the first goal um, but yeah there, there, there's obviously room for improvement but there's nothing nothing can say nothing crazy and nothing they can't fix mm. yeah absolutely and, uh, Ian, Fraser Campbell after the game he said to us that it, it was two mad minutes but uh, on the whole he was very pleased with with the performance it's not as if we came out in in the game and things looked disjointed and, and it wasn't very good it, it was just two mad moments yeah yeah it was absolutely I, I mean like I said it's two very close teams and when I say that you've got to remember Preston are a decent team um, certainly from the last time I saw Town was, that was a massive improvement today um, they were in the game for all of the game just about except for like you say two mad minutes um, two even teams it was actually a really good game to watch even though we lost um, it, was a, it was a decent game to, to watch I thought Town played really well at times Lewis O'Brien in the middle of the park was superb um, I thought I thought Naby Sarr had a really good game. First half, he looked superb. And he just yeah. went, it just went in the second half, he fused, and um, it just went wrong for him. But he, he looks a good player. I think if we, um, if we get that sort of first half performance out of him consistently, there's a good player there. I was with Naby at Charlton, very good, very good player, uh, technically, like, yeah. so good. And over the last few years, I know he's improved on his aggressiveness because that was something that he um, probably needed to work on coming over to England. But technically, he's such a good player, and now he's getting that that aggressiveness, and that might have been the, the reason for the sending off. But aside from that, I think yeah, he's he's a he's a brilliant centre back, and he's going to yeah. be he's going to be very very big player for Huddersfield. After you concede a goal, Tariq, do you yeah. mentally are you are you um, kind of are you? Is it a threat, a bigger threat almost, to then concede again? How, how do you have to fix that mentally to, to stop you kind of conceding again? You know, you know. usually I feel like 
it's either once you've first scored or once you've first conceded, that next five minutes is so important. Whether you've just scored, not getting complacent and um, making sure that everyone's switched on and we haven't taken the foot off the gas, or whether you've just conceded not to get your head down and be like wallowing in the fact that you've just conceded. It's like, are we going to bounce back straight away? And like, um, like Town showed in that last 15 minutes, there was even 10, 10, they had 10 men and they didn't look like they had any less players. So, um, yeah, they, they didn't, they didn't um, drown in the thought of like losing. They looked, everyone looked ready and up for it. So like we've discussed, it is two mad moments and they, they didn't look like a, a losing team or a team that didn't have the, um, the right character to get out of a difficult situation. It, it, yeah, we've, I fully we've... agree with Tariq there, actually. Yeah. Am I back? Yeah, say so I fully agree with Tariq there. The, the, the last 15 minutes, you, you would never have known time we're down to 10 men, would you? The, the heart, oh, the commitment, exactly. the desire that you, you need from your team to do well, it was all, all the ingredients were there. They're just missing, just getting that equaliser, really, which I think, like I say from the start, I think a draw would probably be a fair result. You know, yeah, if Preston yeah, lost, sure. you could have an argument for them to say, well, they played as well as Town. So I think a draw would have been a fair result. The fact that Town lost it, um, like Tariq says, they mustn't get downhearted because it was a really good, solid performance and the kind of performance that yeah. will win you more games than, lo than lose you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Given given that you, do, you don't have those mad moments consistently, the performance they put in on a whole is going to put them in good stead going forward, I believe. Yeah, yeah and then the... The, the second goal, obviously, uh, a slight kind of miscommunication, uh, I would suggest. We, we've spoke before, Ian, about the development of this system, the development of relationships on the pitch. Is that just a case of, of it growing and those kinds of miscommunications and, and mishaps will, will start slowly to go away? Yeah, you would think so, but I, I, it could just be an isolated incident. I, I actually thought, I looked at it, you know, in the replays you saw, I wondered if Ben Hamer could have punched it. That was maybe the only thing he could, uh, you know, the thing that maybe went slightly wrong with that goal. It was a messy, it, the both goals, this is the thing, both Preston's goals were actually messy goals. For all the good football that was played, they, they were messy kind of goals. I, admittedly, the, the Brown's finish was good, but yeah. I just feel, I just wondered if Ben Hamer could have, could have punched it. Um, it might have been a different story. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Tariq, obviously, Ian's already mentioned it, but in the first half, one of the big to uh, talking points was uh, a potential uh, red card for for yeah. Pot. What what was your take on that incident? And if you're on the pitch, what would your reaction have been? It's one of them ones. I feel like if you're on the team that receives that challenge, you're probably looking for looking for a red card. Um, if you're on, if you're, mm. that's your teammate making that challenge, you're going to try and defend it and say, yeah, maybe he's um, he's eager to make the challenge. But you know, it, it could have went either ways. Like it definitely, you couldn't have frowned upon it if it did get if he did get a red card. But a yellow might have might have been what he deserved. But then you know, the game changes. If if that's a red card that early on in the game, then all of a sudden it looks a completely different, completely different fixture. Yeah, absolutely. And and Nabi Sar obviously like we, we mentioned earlier, was, was sent off as well. But like you said, the, you couldn't really tell that, that Town were, were down, to, down to 10 men because of the way they were attacking threat yeah. after keeping the ball flowing. It was if really anything, good to see. Sparked. Yeah. If anything, I feel like it yeah. sparked maybe. Like they, they went up a gear, didn't they? Like they, they injected some speed into the play. Um, Karoma came on, looked intentful. Bakuna getting the ball, driving with it. Like um, they 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 did they, they're such positive play, so yeah, the, the fact that they did manage to give that level of performance with a man down, I think it should only be encouraging to the team. And then, like like you said, obviously Josh Caroma uh, came on. He, he put more attacking intent into the team. When when a side like Preston goes two one up, Ian. And they sit back a little bit more and, and say, basically, we're going to hit you on the break and, and take up the pressure. What do you have to do differently? Is it like Tariq said, you have to inject that pace a little bit more, start driving at men? Yeah, I think it's, it's about the intensity of your, your, your offensive play, isn't it? And 
and, and town had it. They were intense. They, 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 they knocked on the door um, that they didn't get the, the goal that they deserved. It's, it's just it's one of them things. But I, I would take from it as a, as, as a town fan or anyone watching the game today wanting town to do well, that the positive was that they had that in the locker. They did have it in the yeah, locker. They weren't, exactly. uh, there was games last season and, and even earlier this season where you felt, uh, sorry, you know, you know, during the break, mm. you felt that they've not got another gear to go into. I felt town did have another gear today, uh, even with 10 men. I'd have loved to have seen that last 15 minutes with 11 men because it, even then they might have had a, a different a different scoreline. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Tariq, I'm interested uh, to know, I'm, I'm tentative to draw uh, comparisons to obviously when, when you were at Huddersfield Town, that yeah. uh, fantastic 2016-17 season we had here. But for, from watching this, this game, in terms of intensity, how similar do you think that was to that really successful season? Yeah, it, it, looks, it looks similar. I feel like when you've got Hoggy in there, that intensity is never going to be allowed to drop too much. Hoggy, Hoggy sets the pace. He sets the tempo for, for, for the team, you know. So you've got him, you've got Shindy behind. Um, yeah, you can see the similarities. Like, I guess they, they've, they've seen the changes and, and been part of the evolution of the, the squad. And I guess they're the people that would be trying to make sure that's in force still. But this new manager looks like that's... Um, that's one of his key components, that energy, a high energy team. And you can see that coming through. And that was similar to the squad back in 2016-17. Ian, obviously the, the, the first goal we have to mention as well, Fraser Campbell. It was almost a trademark Fraser finish, wasn't it? And an excellent ball yeah. from the aforementioned Lewis O'Brien, who, like you said, you were impressed with. Yeah, I thought he had, he had a fantastic game today. He, was, he seemed to pop up all over the pitch. He was, he was aggressive uh, offensively and defensively, but the goal was a really well-worked move. And, and like you say, Fraser Campbell's been doing that all his career. And, and as soon as it landed at his feet, you, you knew it was going in the back of the net. And it's just what he does, isn't it? And them yeah. sorts of players are absolutely priceless um, at any level, um, but particularly with his experience now as well. I think... If, like I say, if Town can keep that sort of performance, that level of intensity, the consistency in the team, um, and you've got a player like that up front for you, you've got to have a chance. And, yeah. and you know, you know, if, if the create chat, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. What, that is, that is, I completely agree. I completely agree because um, that that goal. Um, Fraser Campbell got he deserved it because uh, he was leading from the front. You can see his pressing yeah. is just not, not you know you don't always get strikers that that press with such intensity and maybe they might do it just to you know um, say they've done it. But he looks like he means it every time he's going to win it. He's really going to win the ball back and you can see how hungry he is to put his team on the front foot and it, it's starting from the front and then he comes in from the back. So I think it's his effort. His effort is quality and he deserved his goal. He, yeah, he offered definitely. so much, doesn't he, to the team in, in terms of the pressing that, that Tariq said now. Uh, but also, while we're getting more bodies forward and there's more attacking intent, it, it's a two-pronged thing now with Fraser, isn't it? It's not just him pressing and running on his own like we have seen in the past. We're pressing yeah. as a team and he's getting more opportunities. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably what... Um, as a striker, I'm not a striker, but that must be <laughs> <laughs> that must be why you run hard because you know you're going to create more opportunities. If you run hard, um, your teammate behind you is going to run hard, and just if you might do it ten times, it might not work. But for that one, two times that you're going to create a a good goal scoring opportunity, it's going to be worth it. And he he clearly believes that he's going to get opportunities from from doing so. And if like your teammate is running that hard, it's only going to in it's going to increase your willingness to do so as well and yeah, yeah to see just yeah it's win-win all round uh, all good strikers like the top you know top level strikers and, and I, I class Fraser Campbell in that he's been at the you know he's played, playing at a very good level now and he's played at the top level the harder they work the more luck they get and I always remember yeah. that, you know Linick was saying that he would make you know 25 runs a game across the near stick and try and beat the defender to the ball and he'd maybe score one and 
all the pundits, all the experts would be, oh, that Lineker always in the right place at the right time. And, and he turned around and it was a really good answer. He says, you don't see the other 25 times that I'm doing the run. No one sees them. And it's, it's the mark of a great striker, isn't it? No one sees the amount of effort they actually, the really good strikers, the amount of effort they put in to get that goal, to create that opportunity and to put yeah. that chance away. Yeah. I think Fraser Campbell fits fits into that that um, that mark there. He, he makes you, you won't see the amount of running he's doing, but he's doing a lot. And then when it does come to him, and that's where I come back to my point about having that player that can finish it off. Fraser Campbell is that kind of player, and he's 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 a he's a premium in, in the championship. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. And to to re, like you know uh, the Skybet Championship a really intense and, and difficult uh, league. Obviously, this is Huddersfield Town's first defeat in, in five games. It, it's such a difficult league, isn't it, to, to get wins bouncing, bounce after bounce after bounce, that you, you can't really take too much from, from this defeat, can you? No, no, especially with the way it is. There's a Saturday, a Tuesday, a Saturday. There's always another opportunity to get, to get your next victory, which is um, going to be encouraging. And with the league, I feel like you would never look at. I don't. I don't care if you're the top two or the bottom. You're not gonna ever look at the table and think, oh, okay, there's a there's free there's an easy three points there. There's never an easy three points in the championship, and anyone can be anyone. Um, could be someone that's struggling at the bottom. They might turn around and put on a performance of their life and beat the team at the top. You know, so uh, uh, you that's the first defeat in five games. I don't think you can have any any bad feeling towards it. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, Ian, obviously, like we've said, we said all along, this is going to be uh, a, a long process. There will be difficult uh, patches and on the road, but we're still seeing elements of the style of play coming across and a new element that's being, being developed as well. Definitely. I mean, Carlos Corran is going to have a lot in his locker and, and he... he I suppose I mean, I'm, I've never been, you know, a coach that level or anything. But he, he probably has so much to give and so much to offer that he's got to be sensible how he gets it across to the players as well. You can only take so much information on in the time that they've had. So, like you say, it's a rolling program, and yeah, exactly. I, I do think you know you look at him already, and he's, he's some of the the, the the tactics that he's implemented. You can see are coming through. Um, I think it could be a, an exciting ride for town fans in the next six months to see how it progresses. Um, town are invested in him. He, he's clearly a very, very good coach. Um, but he's he's going to have to be sensible with the players he's got um, to, to bring them along at, at a pace that they can accept while still doing well in the league. Um, so, no, I think it's it, you can see the signs of progress are there. And the championship is so relentless as well, isn't it? I mean, you, you could see today... Uh, Tariq, obviously Christopher Schindler and, and Lewis O'Brien came back into the starting lineup. Josh Karoma was rested. There's going to have to be changes in personnel, changes in system, especially when you're, you're playing so many games, like we've said already, over such a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a relentless league. So everyone, whether it be the 18 or if, I don't know how, how many people are in the squad, 25, 24, everyone's going to have to be fit because everyone's going to have to get used and utilised. Um, that's why it's probably important that when they are on a training pitch and everyone's um, learning this new style of play and the tactics that the new the new coach wants to implement, everyone needs to be on board and be aware because you just don't know when you're going to get put in and you have to perform when, when your chance does come. And yeah, it's, it's never easy if you haven't played for a good few weeks to get put in. You just have to be as ready as possible. And... and Obviously, with that, Tariq, Birmingham City up next on, on Wednesday. When when you're playing a high intensity like Huddersfield Town are, and like Huddersfield Town did when yeah. you were playing, how important is the the recovery elements of that? You're obviously trying to learn the new style of play, but yeah. equally you have to recover, don't you? Yeah, I think um, as sports science is progressing, you know that recovery is probably the most important thing of it. Um, if you can get that extra 5% on your opponent, it might only come into play and it might only benefit you in the last five minutes of the 90 minutes. But that could be the difference between winning and losing the game. So, yeah, recovery is, sorry, is massively, massively important. 
massively important. So as much as you want to get your work done on the pitch, um, yeah, everyone's body needs to be right. In Birmingham up next, Ian, it's important, isn't it, to kind of put this uh, defeat to, to one side and, and go again and, and stick to the philosophies and the style that the lads are learning? Ah, absolutely. They, 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 yeah, they can't be too upset. Okay, they've lost their game today, but they, they can't be too upset with the, the overall performance. I thought everyone gave everything. They left everything on the pitch. They showed real good intensity at times. They defended really well. Uh, they kept the ball well. Possession stats were good. Um, th there was more positives than negatives today. It was a tough game. It's one of those games that could go either way. It went the wrong way for town today, but no. They should be going into that game with Birmingham with confidence, you know, and 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 their belief in themselves that they they, they are heading in the right direction. That I'd, I'd be if I was a town player tonight, I'd be thinking you'd be gutted you've lost, but bring it on, bring the next game on, and let's let's try and get three points. Yeah, I agree. Uh, absolutely. And then just before uh, we bring this show to a close, uh, Tariq, uh, I just wanted to say that everyone at Huddersfield Town was. Uh, absolutely gutted when when you announced your uh, retirement. I just wanted to check in with you how you're doing and, and what's next for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, obviously, it's a difficult difficult period. It's not it's not easy at all. But it's been it's been yeah it's been so long that I've been having this this issue for, and yeah, if it, it just was the right the right decision um, for me. Now it's just getting into something that I'm going to enjoy. And getting used to a new a new way of life. I know it's going to be a difficult transition, but something that I'm actually quite excited about. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just you know wallow in disappointment and upsetness over what's gone on. Now I'm looking forward to this next chapter in my life. You're still sticking with football. No, good luck as well. Good luck. Thank you, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, sticking foot. Yeah, yeah. Of course, football is my passion. I love football. I can't. No way. I'm going to be after this be away from it permanently you know there's I've got to assess what um, opportunities come along and see what's best for me but yeah I might you know it might be doing something away from football as well you don't know but, um, <laughs> yeah no nah, I, I look forward to it and I do I look forward to it yeah no, I, I just echo what Ian said um, good luck Tariq with your future ventures um, Ian Tariq thank you very much for joining us uh, on the post-match show Fingers crossed we can get a result against Birmingham on Wednesday night. Thank you. Good luck, guys. Take yeah. care.